live from the Fiat Barcelona Gran Via Conference Center in Barcelona, Spain. It's The Cube at HP Discover Barcelona 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HP. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hello, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Barcelona for HP Discover 2014. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, joined my co-host Dave Vellante, and our next guest is Antonio Neri, uh, this esteemed uh, alum of theCUBE, been on many years now, big time executive, uh, VP, general manager, SVP, what's the official title now? Yeah, senior Vice President, General Manager. General Manager, running the all the group. enterprise group. Congratulations. Thank you. The Cube is a good lucky charm for you. You get promoted, everyone, you get promoted all in. Why do you think I'm coming back? <laughs> we love you. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, so, now you're on the big stage, you're on the executive committee. Um, what's it like? What's going on? Tell us uh, the update. No, actually, listen, first of all, thank you for having me back. As I said, you, you bring good vibes, but I love being here talking to you. Uh, I mean, this is a great way to connect with customers and uh, tell our story. Uh, listen, very exciting times. I mean, the industry is going to a massive change. HP is in the forefront of that change. Uh, we actually are making good progress at HP. The fact that uh, I have now the responsibility to drive the enterprise group, it gives me a good opportunity to uh, to tell the customer, right, what is the journey to the new style of IT? And uh, one of the things I I come to the realization, right, that A, you have to be consistent. And uh, you and I were talking earlier, I said, what is your strategy? Strategy has not changed, same for the last three years, right, to become the preferred solution provider for the new style of IT. Uh, the key is the journey, though, and the innovation around it. And uh, what is really great to see is the innovation we are bringing to, to the market. You know, Antonio, one of the things that I love about um, talking with you is just understanding your background, how you grew through the organization. You've been, you know, great career. Um, and, but you've also been part of the change that's happened with HP. We've been at theCUBE now our fifth year, so we've seen it as well. In all the different groups, certainly cloud's a lot different than it was before. The infrastructure groups as it was before. Now you're in charge. So, the strategy hasn't really changed in a few years, but now there's a new um, spring to the step of HP. Meg Whitman's keynote was very impressive. She's on the stage every day. She's out there with three major messages. Innovation, um, we're not dead here at HP. Innovation's happening. Um, customers and partners at the center of every single talking point. And so that's cool, we, that's great messaging. But now it's trickling down. The people are all in their, in their positions. It's showtime, as we said, yeah. we said earlier. So what's the show? What's the plan? Actions, uh, actions happening. What are you, what are you guys doing? Where, where's the, where's the results? What's going to happen? What's the execution plan look like? Well, first of all, I, I think it comes down to leadership and an execution. You call it, you know, showtime. For me, it's all about leadership and execution. And the reality is that we, we chose a path. Uh, we gave a mission to our engineers. We have, what I believe. Uh, the most talented engineering community out in the IT industry. And we have what I call a world-class set of experts on the services side. Because at the end, you have to have the services leading the conversation. And customers, you know, it's not just about the technology, it's about business outcomes. And uh, one of the things that uh, we are really making a good effort in shifting the conversation with our customers. What are the problems? What are the business results they're trying to achieve? And remember, they're under a huge amount of pressure. You know, they need to do more with less, meaning the budgets are not getting bigger, they're getting smaller. They need to be more uh, agile, more cost effective. They need to deliver services faster because at the end of the day, time to value is how they compete. And so, um, when I look at our roadmap and the innovation, it's all about delivering true business outcomes for our clients. So what's the pace right now? I mean, obviously, you got customers that are under a lot of pressure. You now are in charge of the group. It's clear from Meg that with cloud and the changes, the pace of HP itself is on a pretty torrid pace right now. So what's the pace like internally and with customers? How fast is it going right now in your mind? How would you describe that to customers? Yeah, it's going really fa faster than the people ever thought is going to be. I mean, Meg talks about the fact that she had never seen in her career 
the, the pace that this market is moving and is astonishing. And you know, whether it's business model innovation, whether it's uh, technology innovation, uh, but again, the, if you think about it, right, cloud, mobility, security, big data are driving that change. And um, you know, from the infrastructure standpoint, we believe infrastructure really matters. So you have these you know, trends from you know, best of breed to converge infrastructure, to integrate the solutions, software defined data center made a huge change. Uh, obviously cloud is going to dictate you know, a different type of business model. And this is where you know, when we think about IT, we think about workload centricity. Because at the end of the day, you have to align the infrastructure and the orchestration around the workloads. And, uh, and that pace of innovation has to accelerate. Well, your infrastructure matters, Alon, translates into an investment strategy. It's actually unique in the industry. As you see companies running yep. from parts of the Absolutely. infrastructure or others entering in very narrow slices, you're saying, no, we have, we want to be the infrastructure platform we're going to invest Absolutely. in that. And then you see the machine, yep. it's like, wow, that's the next generation Absolutely. of infrastructure. And that's why we're making investments there. Yeah, too. and you, and I want to talk about that a little bit, uh, but you also got the organization right. Uh, when you moved services, technology services, into the EG, and then you've got converged, you basically follow the converged path. Yeah. It's so important to get the organization right, isn't it? Let me talk about that a little bit. Well, yeah, because at the end of the day, customers are looking for a solution. They are not looking to buy a server or a storage or a networking you know, uh, box. What they're buying is the solution to deliver through business outcomes. And having a, a group of people that know how to drive that conversation, which is a services value-oriented conversation, is fundamental in this new style of IT. Um, and so that's why technology services, in our case, plays a huge role with our professional services and our consultant services, but also with the support services behind the scenes. And so uh, we integrated TS, right, in that construct because we knew that customers are looking for help. At the end of the day, it's all about a journey. You know, some people are going to still, you know, consolidate and virtualize the infrastructure, and some people are already moving really quickly to the cloud. But then you have to move at the pace of the customer, and you need to be able to work that journey at their own pace. So you've aligned those businesses, but they still are businesses that you report on. You know, Meg right. talks about them on, on the call. Uh, you kissing servers, and you know. I love it. <laughs> it's good. I want to talk about that too. Um, and I've said to John, HP's got this big business that's a, a legacy business, that's a managed decline business, and they, they make investments as they need to in that business, but they're putting all the emphasis and all the innovation in the hot products. So that's the challenge you have right. as the leader of this business. And I wonder if you could talk about that dichotomy. Your goal is obviously to get the new stuff growing fast enough to offset the decline in the old. So yeah. how's that going? Yeah, I mean, uh, listen, you know, HP, made a promise to customers to keep them on a journey, and the reality is that you have to deliver against that promise. Let me give an example. Uh, we are very committed to the Unix business, you know, right. uh, with our Integrity Itanium platform, and we will continue to support customers through the life cycle of that, of that platform. Uh, we continue to evaluate what is the next generation of that platform. I just want to be clear, we will continue to invest in that business, but at the same time, there is a different path that customers want to take, a path that's more open, and that's why we work closely with Intel, with the next generation of the Integrity Superdome X, which is based on x86. As opposed to Itanium. I suppose, yeah. but, but Itanium will continue still, to support right. and invest as well. So we get them you're a, giving a path, you give a choice. Yeah, choice. Yeah, At yeah, the yeah, end, it's all about yeah. choice. Yeah. But uh, you know, one of the things that we, we really are, are doing a better job is to focus on what I call the 80-20 rule, 20% of the things are going to drive 80% of the outcome. And ultimately it's about you know, making you know, choices and based on priorities. So you know, the fact that we continue to invest in networking is a big, big deal. I just want to reinforce that networking for us is a core component of the data center strategy, whether it's Flex Campus, Flex Branch, or Flex Fabric in the core of the data center. Software-defined networking is going to be a massive change as you move to the cloud. You have to enable that journey. Uh, storage with all the announcements we make here, right? I mean, think about how far we came from three parts, but at the end, you need to provide a converged storage architecture to the customers for the journey to the cloud. But then connecting better the dots. And ultimately, one of the big connectors, the connectors is HP OneView. And HP OneView is the single pane of management uh, 
for the entire infrastructure, both physical and virtual. And now we are integrating HP software in that infrastructure. So connecting our software assets with the, uh, the HP management level is another aspect that we're making huge investments. So it's, it's always a trade and balance, but the reality is that customers need to have a choice, but we do it in a very open, uh, you know, form way. That's why we pick up the stack, open source, and we're committed to that. Yeah, yeah. focusing that 80% exactly. on that's really. Yeah, so a couple a couple of things I want to share with you was the, the, we always like to get the hallway award to the to the to the the product that kind of like yeah. steals the show. Uh, One view right next to us is getting a lot of buzz, and this is not yep. because they're next to us. It's just good buzz. I mean, multiple feedback from you know the top independent bloggers. Uh, one view is one of those uh, highlights. Um, the other one is the EVO Rail kind of thing. Obviously, the machine gets the headline, right? But EVO Rail speaks to the partnering strategy, and one view speaks to some of the software innovations around customers dealing with it, right? So th that hi that brings up the whole multi-vendor. How do you guys compete? Obviously, you want to have a polymorphic, like a storage environment. You want to have some competitive strategy advantage with products, but you also have to partner and be open. That's still a yeah. core tenant of HP. Absolutely. So talk about that and how you guys are balancing that piece of the business. Yeah. You got to do more partnering. And how is partnering changing with, with converged infrastructure? Um, is it still the same? Is it different now that you're bringing things together? What's, what's the update on that? No, no, no. Uh, so listen, we, we will give customer choices. So the reality is that customers have many, many choices. So many customers are on a VMware path but they love our infrastructure. So you have to integrate that infrastructure with, with that, that partnership. And so our partnership with VMware is very, very strong. It goes many, many years ago with our server business. We are evolving into a converged infrastructure partnership. We are integrating VMware with our HP OneView so that customers, if they decide to go to a VMware cloud stack, they can use our HP OneView to integrate with a VMware cloud stack and still manage that heterogeneous infrastructure. The same with Microsoft. It's exactly the same thing with our Hyper-V. We at HP are the largest Hyper-V install base for Microsoft. Why? It's because again, we have a strength which is called yeah. compute, and we are building around that strength together with Microsoft. And the reality customers will also pick Azure as a way to deliver the value. Has integration changed at all? I mean, integration's always been a key strategy for compatibility. You integrate in with its value and you connect with the customers, right? Um, you know, with, with VCE, with EMC, for instance, we saw that partnership, it's kind of rocky right now. It's uh, with falling apart. Cisco. Just to be clear, it's falling apart. It's falling, okay, you said it great, you said it. So falling apart. Um, but that doesn't end the story there. Well, right? it's That's, been subsumed. I mean, EMC you had to take it back in, right? Because Cisco said we don't I mean, want it. Listen, there, there was a conflict there, it's very clear, right? I mean, yeah, when you're trying to uh, virtualize the network, and uh, you know, and that's the Cisco profit pool, right. it's clear there is a conflict of interest. Yeah, if EMC didn't buy Nicera, they might not. Yeah. Have. I mean, oh, it's a choice, yeah. right? They blew themselves up. Okay, but they knew that. <laughs> they kind of knew that was coming. But their business was doing well. So, like, that's the notion that people are looking at is the integration. What do you guys look down the road? for future innovation areas that you can speak to without you know, kind of giving too much confidential information. What are the key areas that you want to take it to the next level? Well, there are several areas. So let me start uh, first, what I think is very important, the management of the infrastructure. You're going to continue to see huge amount of innovation with HP One View. We believe is fundamental to our strategy because managing that complexity with the simplicity of a platform that manage heterogeneous infrastructure. That's why we, if a customer has decided to stay on a Cisco path, what we are giving them is the ability to manage Cisco and HP with our tools. What that means, you can reduce tools by 50% and you can manage all of the infrastructure with the power of one finger in a common user, uh, you know, user interface. So the reality is that you're giving them a choice, but you drive the simplicity at the same time. Um, so, HP One View, you're going to see a lot of innovation there. Mm -hmm. uh, more predictive analytics, uh, more capabilities to support other type of third-party components as we go forward. Think about the converged infrastructure. You know, we went through converged infrastructure 1.0. HP was at the forefront of that. Um, now we're going to converge infrastructure 2.0, but also we're moving to hyper-convergence. Right, so the Evo Rail is an example of a partnership with with VMware to address, you know, SMB and mid-market type of customers that need the enterprise class 
hyperconvergence at the SMB level, and that's why hyperconvergence started. But then hyperconvergence actually gives you an ability to integrate as a scale-out architecture, so that you can scale as you as your volume grow. That's going so to be scale. Another. We always, always love scale out and scale up is what exactly. customers want. Exactly. Not they just scale both. out and get they want stuck. Above, right. So, so that's another area you can see a lot of innovation. Now, think about the compute, right? We always talk about providing the, the right compute for the right workloads and the right economics. I know Alan was here earlier, yeah. and HP is the only vendor out there who can provide all the compute resources to manage all the vast majority of the workloads. So I love and storage, obviously. So right? I'd love to ask the questions now that you're the head honcho, and we knew you win. Um, but this M and A conversation, Dave, always and I have on the cube. What's your buy? What's your buy list look like? I mean. You guys have a list of uh, companies you like to share. Uh, any areas? <laughs> I don't share, I don't share the list. You know, well, let me ask. I, let me ask I, you. I can tell you definitely. We will always consider M and A's. I mean, I think Meg yeah. was very clear about this, right? She said, "Listen, the pace of the market is so rapid. At the end of the day, even though you are increasing your own R and D investments, the reality you will have to augment that with acquisitions." And so HP now If you're moving is, fast, you got to have the organic coming out yeah, of the labs, yeah, filling some gaps with the product right. lines with some yeah, okay. we'll But two years ago, I asked Meg at an analyst meeting, I said, you know, what's a better use of cash, acquisitions or, or stock buybacks? And she said, debt pay down. Yeah, that was absolutely. two years ago. She said, we're not going to do any of that until we pay down the debt. Now, but look what we, we are pay today. down the debt. We are in a, almost a five points change, you know, right. in, uh, in positive and, cash flow. And you've done about a billion dollars in dividends and stock exactly. buybacks and a few tuck ins. So now you're in a position to start being dangerous, in my opinion. And I think, as you pointed out, it's necessary to compete it's necessary, in this changing absolutely. world. It's okay. absolutely necessary. Well, that, well that's just, you know, well, so that, that begs the next question. What are you guys looking at? I mean, categorically. Everything. <laughs> you know, uh, let's Attention, say. startups. Uh, before <laughs> Antonio's got his shopping list out, so. Uh, uh, no, in all seriousness, we'd love we, to talk we, with you. We, listen, There's a lot we, of white space opportunity out there. What are you there. not looking at? You're not looking at an all flash array company, I bet. Is that no, fair to say? Uh, oh, <laughs> listen, I, we, we're going to look at... Or is that, is that too much of a too strong? They don't want to pay no, $4 no, no. Billion for it. I will say, we, we look at everything that's of value to the customer and they help us move the agenda forward. Uh, I think, you know, we are very proud of when we came three years ago. I mean, we made huge progress in the transformation of the company. Uh, you know, stabilizing our revenue profile, uh, position ourselves for the next generation of the new style of IT, paying our debt back and actually be in a very strong position now, uh, improving profitability, the innovation that we bring into the market. So, yes, we, and again, you know, we, we saw are Scott, we saw position. Scott Weller on, but he actually gave up his cube spot for some of his the rising stars like uh, Seamus Dunn. They're yep. doing billions in revenue from zero. The services side's booming. Obviously, customer demand is high. Um, Where's the rubber hitting the road for you guys? I'll give you the final word, share with the, uh, the audience. Where's the action? Um, well, uh, continue to deliver the promise to the customer. So you said it earlier, right? Customers and partners are at the center of everything we do. So for us, channel partners are very, very critical. In fact, Meg, uh, Mike Nefkins, and Dion were yesterday, Robert went together speaking to our channel partners from the floor, uh, just to, to share the excitement uh, about our strategy and the innovation. And we can sense that the partners are equally excited because now, it's not just the product, it's also how we enable them in that journey to the new style of IT. We are going to continue to invest on our channel partners from the sales enablement, technical reference architectures, value proposition, point of view, while at the same time giving them the tools to go and compete. And then you will continue to see a ton of innovation. You know, you talk about the machine, the machine is a vision for the future, but many of the components of the machines are going to start showing up in our current products way earlier than that. Okay, so, how's Moonshot doing? Mushad is going very well. Um, you know, we introduced two months ago our the first industry ARM 64-bit solution. Um, you know, which is targeted to specific workloads. We're seeing a lot of interest. I mean, I can see here across the the hall. You know, the Moonshot the Moonshot uh, booth. Uh, it was a big signing last night with the Foxconn. The deal. Foxconn deal. I mean, think about it. Foxconn, we enable significant cost reduction by repatriating public cloud workloads on premise. Mm. And they are deploying Moonshot. 
You guys, it's good. I mean, the product, like I said, the strategy hasn't changed in a few years now. It's, nope. you know, it's all, all about the showtime. Seat. It's showtime. Yeah. Yeah. Showtime. showtime. You're here on theCUBE, it's showtime. We have all the data we're sharing with you. Antonio Neri, good friend of theCUBE, now under a lot of pressure, under the gun. Still looks cool as a cucumber. Look at him. He's, uh, he's not breaking a sweat at all. He's looking good. I uh, am confident. You're That's confident, right. very confident. Uh, you're in a good position. Great to see you. Thank uh, you. Running the enterprise group, obviously a strong part of HP, has been and continue will be uh, in the future in, in, the, in the enterprise split as you guys go on. Good luck with that, and I'm sure it'll be great. Good to see you. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back live here in Barcelona after this short break. We'll be right back. <laughs>